Hey everyone, this is Aaron from Studio 3B. Today I'm going to discuss with you how to rip 4K Blu-rays, regular Blu-rays, and DVDs into the lossless MKV file format. Stay tuned. Listen, I know many of you may not have a Blu-ray player, or you may have a Blu-ray player, but you're tired of using, you know, a physical medium every time you want to watch a movie. Well, um, if you've seen my previous videos about Plex Media Server, this is able to store the digital file of Blu-rays, as well as, you know, CDs and DVDs and etc. on your server, and you could stream it as if it's uh, a Netflix video or a Prime video, just like that, but you stream it from your own server locally on your network. Uh, this is a very good solution. I've been using it for a little while now, I'd say a couple years, and it is able to make things a lot easier when you want to find out what movie you want to watch and just watch it right there on demand. So let's get started getting something set up for this. So the first thing you're going to need is a Blu-ray. You could choose a regular standard Blu-ray or you could choose a 4K Blu-ray combination. Many Blu-rays these days come with a 4K Ultra HD option and also a digital download which is pretty useful if you don't have Plex Media Server and uh, you want to stream the video from MoviesAnywhere.com. It allows you to put in a digital code and get the movie streaming from there. But if you want to watch the 4K version, you're going to have to take the media off the disk and put it on your Plex server and stream it locally on your network. Reason being, 4K files are extremely large, many bits of information per second streaming to your television and it's just too much to handle for a normal internet connection. So you're going to have to do it on a local network. So the first thing you're going to need is a Blu-ray. This one I ordered from Amazon has 4K as well as standard Blu-ray which is 1080p as well as the digital download. So next thing you're going to need is a Blu-ray optical drive on your computer. The one I opted for was this one, the LG WH16NS60. I did a little research and this one seemed like it was going to work well for 4K for the price I was looking for. So if, you, if you're looking for 4K support, you're typically going to find higher than a $100 price range. But the trick with this one is it comes in at $110 has ultra HD support but that's only for playing 4k movies so if you're going to actually remove the media off the disk and store it on your server you're going to have to be able to rip the movie and decrypt the content so there is one extra step you're going to have to take to get that accomplished but the first thing you're going to want to do is order this optical drive once it comes in you are going to need to Install it in your computer and start a Windows operating system session. Next thing you're going to want to do is go to this forum step-by-step -step guide. I'll leave a link in the description. Basically, for this particular drive, which is what I listed and which is what I ordered, it gives you step-by-step -step on how to patch your firmware on this drive. Um, I'm not going to go through these steps. I've already done this. But you're going to need to start Windows and you're going to need to download the patch file. You're going to need to download the Windows flashing utility. And you're also going to need to patch the, the optical drive with the patching utility. And this is kind of like what the interface looks like. And then you're going to be able to use the drive. It'll say Libre Drive status enabled when you're using Make MKV. So that leads me to the next topic is what software are you going to use to get the media off the disk? And for that, I recommend Make MKV. It is free. It's in beta mode, but it's free and it comes with Windows, Mac and Linux. So let's fire that up. So the first thing you do is start Make MKV. If you haven't already downloaded and install it. You'll notice that my Libra Drive information says status enabled and I have the patched firmware version 1.03. That's what you're going after. You want this patched 1.03 firmware. 
So when you fire it up, you'll notice I have my Blu-ray drive connected and it says it's opened in access mode. Then you go up to the application menu, go file, open disk, and select your Blu-ray player. I forgot to mention the first thing you really want to do is insert the 4K Blu-ray. Okay, once it reads the disk, it gives you a list of what the files are on it that it could rip for you. So what you'll notice is it has two titles. The first one, 5.1 surround sound DTS English. And the second one is 5.1 surround sound English. This has German French subtitles. And so does this one. So which is the difference? Let's see here. They're both 91.4 gigabytes. This has 48 chapters. What I'm trying to decide is which one of these titles I'm going to rip because there seem to be a duplicate and you're not going to need both the movies ripped. They're going to be very large anyway. They're obviously almost 100 gigabytes in size. So I'm going to choose the first one. Reason being is I think this one is separated out by chapters and this one might not be. So I'm going to go for that. And then what you do is see this little button here. It says save selected items. Notice that the file folder where it goes to is listed here. And you're just going to click this. It's going to say, do you want to create the directory? You click yes. And then it just goes ahead and accesses your volume. And it starts to save the file to your disk. Now this is a Blu-ray file, but this is also 4K, so it's actually exponentially larger than a standard Blu-ray, and it's going to take to get this file off this disk. So what you do is you just let this sit here. It might take up to a couple hours, depending on how fast your computer is and how fast the disk is, etc. Okay, so say you recorded the 4K movie and you now want the standard blu-ray for when you're watching it on devices that are not compatible with 4k what you do is you click the eject button give it a minute because sometimes it has a grip on the drive all right take the disc out put that away and grab the one that says regular blu-ray put that in your drive Watch the disk image spin. This takes a minute. Okay, once you see that it's loaded, you go File, Open Disk, select your Blu-ray drive. This will start to scan the disk. The logs will output all kinds of different content about what it's doing, these technical details about sectors and things like that. All right, so now you just see that it has one title and you can just keep that selected and then just click make MKV, save the selected files. All right, that'll do the same thing. That'll create a new folder on your drive and save that content. And I'm gonna let that stop because I've already done this. Okay, now let's talk about DVDs. We're going kind of descending order right now. So, so I'm ejecting the Blu-ray. And say you have an old school DVD. Never thought I'd say that, but DVDs are old school now. Uh, but they could still have, you know, good movies on them. Let's see what I have. Here's a DVD I own, Ready Player One. You know that because it just says DVD on it and not Blu-ray. So you pop that out of the disc case, pop that in your Blu-ray drive, which also reads regular DVDs. All right. And then this one automatically starts to play on my computer, which is funny. So I close that. Same thing, go file, open disk. Once again, decrypting data, technical details about sectors. And here I just have 14 chapters and that's the movie. This wasn't the best example. Some DVDs come with lots of previews and special features. So the previews will be in the beginning and the special features at the end. Honestly, I tend not to rip those just because it gets clutters up my Plex server and nobody really wants to watch those typically. So 
what I do is if it's a if it's a preview, you'll see it's like one chapter, two chapters before the main title. You just uncheck those. So uh, same thing with special features. There'll be like small chapter segments at the end of the main feature. How you know it's the main feature is it typically just says title and it has the largest number of chapters and data. And that's the main one. Sometimes you have different languages and therefore you just choose a language of your choice. For me, it's English. Sometimes you have 7.1 and 5.1. And since my stereo is a 5.1, I just check at 5.1. But basically go through here and just make sure you're only ripping what you need because, you know, hard disk space, although it's not expensive, does run out pretty quick, uh, especially ripping these movies. So here you can see these are my Blu-ray movies that I've ripped so far. And here I have the Ten Commandments, which I've previously ripped. And in here I've got two files. This is the standard Blu-ray and I did that by going dash BR. This is uh, the one disc that comes in the set that is 1080p. And this is the 4K Blu-ray. And here I named it 10 Commandments 4K. So just give it a separate name so that Plex can distinguish which file is which. It doesn't use the name to distinguish the resolution, but it just helps that if there are two different names so it cannot get confused. If I go get info, this file is 96 gigabytes. And compared to the standard Blu-ray, which is only 6.5 gigabytes. So that just lets you know how much more information is actually in a 4K, which is something not to mess around with too lightly. You're going to need some fast network connections in your house. You're going to need a fast router and a, a 4K supported television. So once it's in your folder on your server, on your Plex Media server, Fire up Plex. So I'm going to go to Plex. And if I go to my Blu-ray area, there's the Ten Commandments. But you, what you normally do is if you just add a new movie to your folder, what you do is click on this three dots here and click Scan Library Files. And it will scan and find the new movie. And then what you want to do is match the movie if it doesn't already match it by default and make sure it selects the actual metadata from the online service that gives it what the information about the movie is. So here it's actually it's already set to the Ten Commandments, the correct version. So once you do that, you have the movie there. Then from your television or computer or whatever device you have Plex installed on and you want to watch the movie, you click on it, get info and it says it's using the, t the 4K version. Well, this app doesn't have the play version button available. It looks like it already is going to default to the 4K version. So if I resume the playback, it's going to play back the 4K version where I left it off. And it looks like it's playing it pretty slow. And I'm not liking that. So the video is really laggy right now. And that I can't understand why. I'm thinking because my computer just can't handle this. So let's go over to my television and see how this plays. Okay, now I've got this set up on my 4K television. Let's turn it on. And I'll go to Plex. You have to go to Apps. Sometimes you just got to search for it if you don't have a shortcut on your television. This is a Samsung television, so everything is it's a smart television and everything's built into the TV and it uses its own operating system and everything. So um, let's just search for Plex. Yep, there it is. So you go to Plex. If you don't have it installed, install it. Then you'll have to sign in with your credentials. If you don't have Plex Pass, uh, you're probably going to want it. Otherwise, you don't need it for local streaming. But if you if you want to access Plex from any other, uh, you know, outside the network locations, you're going to need a Plex Pass. OK, so here's the Ten Commandments. That's the movie we're using for this demo. See, it says uh, 4K HDR, but I think there's a way to play the other version. I just can't figure out where it is. Oh, yeah, video quality. Here we go. 
so it has the 4K selected. If you want to downgrade to the regular Blu-ray, you would go down to here. So I'm going to try the 4K version and see how that plays. I'm going to try play. I'm going to try resume. Fill the ark with water. Sink it into silence. And there you go. So really, what would I, the problem I was having on my computer is that the um, graphics card probably wasn't able to properly handle a window with 4K frames coming into it. So um, really, you don't want to mess around with 4K too much unless you have a television able to stream it. So for all intents and purposes, regular Blu-ray 1080p looks just great. However, if you really are a stickler for quality and you want to put up with the large file sizes and kind of headaches that goes along with streaming such large files, be my guest. I have a few 4K movies, Ten Commandments is one of them, and you know, as long as your TV is able to handle it, go for it. If for some reason you're having problems, you just go to settings, video quality, downgrade to 1080p, go back. And let's try play from start. And this should be, oh, what is this? Well, it needs to be converted for playback. What is that all about? All right. So this is probably converting to standard Blu-ray. Okay, anyway, there you have it. That's the path from ordering your Blu-ray and Blu-ray player optical drive from Amazon and getting it to run on your Plex server. Thanks. Guys, if you thought this was helpful and this video was useful for you, click the like button. And if you want more content like this, click subscribe.